Hey, this is Michael Pavlovich, and I'll be taking you on a guided tour of ZBrush 3.5 for part one of the ZBrush training series. Um, what we'll start off with is the very basics of ZBrush, such as, uh, you know, ZBrush documents, ZBrush tools, preferences, settings, and of course, simple navigation within ZBrush. And once we're comfortable with this bare foundation you need to know, we'll jump right in and create something right away. Uh, we'll start out with a simple 3D cube, and just using a couple brushes, we'll go ahead and create a human head, like this one. Again, just starting out with a cube. And the reason I have it set up this way is because I don't want to bog you down with hours of detailed instruction before you even get into ZBrush and start having some fun. Um, with any luck, this technique will get you acclimated with the foundations of ZBrush and hopefully dispel any hesitations or preconceived notions that you might have um, just by getting in and you know start creating stuff right away. Uh, however, once you've gotten into ZBrush and created some cool things, uh, I'm going to take a step back and we'll take a more organized approach to ZBrush and its various functions. We'll go over some basic functions in detail first, such as brushes, masking, tileable textures, symmetry, subtools, projection master, materials, and polypainting. Then I'll go into a little more advanced concepts, such as retopologizing techniques, transposing with and without masks, and then we'll create a humanoid with Z spheres. And once we've done that, we'll actually use ZSphere's 2 or the Z sketching within ZBrush to create a, uh, a Z creature. And we'll talk about the different settings to get you your adaptive or unified base mesh uh, ready to sculpt on. Once we have our base mesh set up in ZBrush the way we like it using the previously mentioned techniques, I'll also give you some layer techniques that you can use within ZBrush that end up saving you some time, as well as maybe some morph target techniques that you might find useful. And we'll also get into geometry creation within ZBrush, so you don't have to leave the program every time you want to create something new. And finally, we're going to go ahead and poly paint that head that we've been using in the demonstrations and get it to a pretty finished state. Part one won't be a purely production oriented video. I'm going to try and show you as much as I can. And in some cases, there's going to be lots of ways to do certain things, but I'm going to try and show it all. And I'll leave it up to you as to how you'd like to use ZBrush in your own production. For example, I'm going to show you about six different ways to project detail from one mesh to another. So even if you find yourself using one technique for the majority of your production, you'll at least have the seed planted on those other five techniques, just in case you need to do a little problem solving down the line. What we'll do in part two is, using the techniques you've already learned, create an entire high-res character from start to finish. Uh, we'll poly paint him and get him, get him ready for a visual target sign off. And I'll show you how you can also use that poly paint to bake off as a starting point for your diffuse maps. Um, also, while we're working on him, I'll go ahead and introduce even more ZBrush production techniques, as well as go over some very cool ZBrush plugins. Uh, these plugins, by the way, that uh, Pixelogic has available for download for free uh, from their website. So part one, at the very least, will get you comfortable within ZBrush, and hopefully by the end of part one, you'll be rocking ZBrush on your own projects, and the transition from part one to part two should be a pretty smooth one as well. So let's get into ZBrush and have some fun.